Thanks for tuning in once again to watch The Ordinary Filmmaker. It's Friday. We're on the eve of a long weekend. Well, at least if you're living in Ontario. And it's cold. I mean, it's very cold for the end of July, the beginning of August. This is normally when it's the hottest time of year. It's currently 61 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's our high for today. I went out for a walk this morning. I couldn't sleep. I was up at 6 o'clock. I went for a walk, and I couldn't believe how cold it was. But then when I got back, I noticed... Well, I know something very interesting. Are there any Nikon fans out there? Well, I hope you have a sense of humor because Sam Newton put out a music video and this thing's absolutely hilarious. Um, now, it could have been about Canon, it could have been about anybody else, but he chose to pick on Nikon. Now, if you look at the description to his video, he does say, look, this is a joke, please don't get upset. And I think it's definitely done in good taste. I definitely think it's funny. He's taken a sort of R&B approach to it, and it rhymes. Um, it's shot very well, unlike some of my videos, the exposure and everything. He's, it's a really well done video. Sorry to interrupt myself once again, but please go ahead and like and subscribe. Now, when you like and subscribe, it tells me a couple of things. One is it tells me that you like this video and that you help support this channel. But more importantly, it tells YouTube that you're interested. And the more people that do that, the more YouTube is willing to tell other people about my videos. And now... Back to our regular scheduled video. But let me set up the story, because I can't show you his entire video, although I do recommend that you watch his video later. And I do apologize for all the noise. It's very, very windy here. You probably can't tell by my hair or lack thereof, but it's very windy and it's blowing the shades about and it's making a bit of rustling noise. But that aside, in this video, he's, he's relaxing on the beach. He's chill, he's cool, he's got his shades on. And this girl walks by and she says, hey, you know, would you mind taking my photos? You're kind of a big thing and I'd really appreciate if you take my photos. It's not exactly what she says, but it's kind of like that. And he says, yeah, but I don't have my camera gear here. And she says, no worries. I've got mine. I got it taken care of. And he thinks to himself, are you a Canon or a Fuji chick? You got a Leica or a Sony girl. What do you be shooting with? She pulls her camera out of the bag and it's, um, it's a Nikon. And this is what he says about that. Oh, no, no, she shoots on Nikon. And just in case you didn't get that, he goes on a little further and says this. Oh, God, no, she shoots on Nikon. And I just thought that was hilarious. And I don't, for whatever reason, he's chosen to make a Nikon look like a potato. Now, he could have chosen a lemon, and that would have been, that would have been pushing it. That would have been saying that Nikons are terrible and they don't work but he chose a potato. Now, personally, I like potatoes. I like them boiled, I like them baked, I like them done up in crisps or chips. I really do love potatoes. It's one of my favorite vegetables. And even people who don't like vegetables, they love potatoes. And from it there, I, I took another look at the video. I thought, is this a potato jet video? Because that would make a lot of sense. It's kind of potatoes thing, but it's not. It's Sam Newton. And Sam Newton, on his channel, he's got 100,000 subscribers, and I'm I'm surprised he only has 100. I wouldn't be surprised by the time this is over with. He's up to at least 110. And this is where I think he kind of missed the mark a little bit here. He should have picked on Canon. Nikon has a much smaller market share, whereas Canon has a huge market share. And we are all aware of, both Canon fans and those who don't like Canon, about that cripple hammer. And especially before the R5, it was... It was a pretty sorry state. I mean, people who were buying Sonys were always making fun of people with Canons, and people with Canons were going like, yeah, yeah, they got a point. When are we going to get something really good? When are we going to get something that's just not a minor update of the minor update to the minor update that was provided? I mean, look at the 5D Mark IV. It was a pretty decent camera, and it is a solid camera. You can take really incredible photos even today. But compared to everything else that was on the market, it wasn't groundbreaking. It wasn't even... Well, it wasn't even close to groundbreaking. And then Canon finally jumped into mirrorless and gave us the EOS R, which all it was was a mirrorless version of the 5D Mark IV, some three to four years later. And so we came out into 2020 thinking like, myself personally, even though I had a lens inventory, I thought, you know, maybe it's time to move on. Maybe it's time to finally pull the plug and go to Sony. And bite the losses from having to sell all my lens gear. And then they came out with the R5, or then there was the rumors of the R5, and we couldn't believe that. But anyhow, back to Sam Newton's video. I think he did a really, really great job here. I just, 
the, I, Sam, if you're watching, and you're probably not, I've only got 22,000 subscribers, but you've got an opportunity here to make fun of Canon. Um, Canon's given the market lots of opportunities. Uh, the cripple hammer aspect is there. Um, and I think you did a really terrific job of this Nikon video. Now, you didn't mention which Nikon this was. Is this the new Z9 that's coming out? Is it another camera that we're not aware of, the Potato, the Nikon Potato series? Uh, but seriously, uh, very well done. I, I loved it. I thought it was great. And uh, I really do hope you get a lot of positive feedback on this video from, you know, you're trying to uh, make your sponsors happy. So I hope that happens. Uh, but very well done. Your, the audio, the, the syncing, the color range, the dynamic, sorry, the dynamic range, the color grading, everything just pulls together so well that it, it looks like a professional music video, something that I would expect if you went out into the market and you hired a company to produce one for you. It's very, very well done, so um, kudos on that. But this is a perfect segue into the Nikon Z9, and yes, if you guys can believe it, this video is all about Nikon. Well, at least it is now. I might change and talk about Sony in a little bit. The Nikon Z9 is Nikon's mirrorless flagship camera. It's a successor to the D6. Like Canon's R3 is an upgrade over the uh, 1DX Mark III in most areas except for those dual card slots. The Z9 is seen as a mirrorless upgrade over the D6, which was just released last year. That would leave Canon with the only one not having mentioned anything about their R1 flagship camera. Sony came up with the Alpha 1 back in January. A development announcement was made by Nikon for their flagship camera, the Z9, and I'm going to cover off, just summarize the capabilities. But Canon, they haven't, there, there's no rumors. Canon has completely tightened up their shop. There's no rumors on the R1, nothing credible. And we don't even have a rough window when that one's coming. There's no development announcement, although I'm hoping by October, which is just, what, a month away? Because it's beginning of October when NAB is going to be held. We're not far away. I mean, okay, so two months away. My math is off. It's early. It's early in the morning. I haven't gotten much sleep. Please don't be too harsh on me. But one of the biggest things about the Z9, we know it's going to be a great stills, fast action sports camera. And there's an improvements in autofocus. There's improvements in the accuracy. This camera is going to have somewhere between a 45 and a 50 megapixel sensor, and I believe it's going to be 45. Let's see what Nikon rumors are saying. It's going to be 45 megapixels. We got 30 frames per second. But one of the reasons they're doing that 45 megapixels, they're not copying Canon, but 45 megapixels is what you need if you want to do 8K video, if you want to do specifically DCI 8K video. So yes, this camera can do 8K, 24, 25, and 30 frames per second. And that's going to be a pretty big deal. Now, in terms of 4K, you, of course, get 120 frames per second. So the same video specs as you get in the Canon EOS R5, which is going to be priced about $2,500 less. We don't know the price of the Z9. It's going to be somewhere between six dollars and $7,000. And if I was a betting man, and I'm not, I'd be living in a really nice, palatial palace if that... Well, if I was... I'm going to imagine that I'd be a successful gambler, but uh, no, that is not the case. I, I think it's going to be $6,500. I don't see it going $7,000. This doesn't seem to be a huge improvement over what's out there. And, and I look at the video specs, and I say the video specs are really good. But they aren't better than what's in the R5, unless, of course, they've got 8K oversampling. Do they have 8K RAW? Do they do recording without any limits? And I'm saying limit free. I'm no overheat limits and no 30 minute record limits. And that would definitely put it over the R5 because when, if you're going to be out there filming and if you're going to be doing anything to the degree that Sam Neill is doing, you can't do that with cameras where you don't know when it's going to overheat, how long it's going to need to cool down. It's, it's you, you can't do that. So if the Z9 solves that, that's a pretty big deal. Will they do RAW? Will they do all I? Or will they, will they do mostly long gop like Sony does? And Sony's long gop or IPB is, is very well done. I, I had the Sony a7S III for a while and I was quite impressed. I really do want to get the a7S III back though so I can do my shooting outside where I want to capture a bit more detail, but I was very pleased with the Sony. Now, other aspects of this camera, it's going to have a new image sensor and this shouldn't be a surprise. New image sensor, new processor, um, 
going to 45 megapixels, obviously you're going to need a new sensor. And obviously, if you're going to be doing video, you're going to have to be tweaking and fine tuning everything. And of course, if you want to shoot 30 frames per second, then obviously you're going to need that high bandwidth. So you're going to need a data bus that's close to about one gigabits per second. And you're going to need dual CF Express cards. And this camera does have dual CF Express cards. So it's looking to be a really good camera. And what does it look like? Well, here's some photos we have. These photos were taken at the Tokyo Olympics. Now, I don't remember the name of the person who initially leaked these photos, but he's since taken down his tweet. But thank you to Nikon Rumors for putting these photos back up there. So you can see some detail of this camera. It doesn't appear to be big as the 1DX Mark III, but it's definitely bigger than the R5. Uh, so I do hope it's got some sort of um, effective cooling system. There's nothing worse than having something like 8K or 4K 120 and not knowing how long you've got. Uh, I, I've, I've definitely offset that. And you can offset if you get any of these cameras that overheat, that have overheat warnings, well, not warnings, have overheat issues or record limits. There are definitely ways around that. But what you also have to ask yourself, if you're primarily a video shooter, is now the time to go into something like a cinema camera? something to definitely consider but here's the thing when it comes to cinema cameras right now there really isn't anything out there that's going to give you 8k in anything close to these affordable cameras and i know sixty five hundred dollars isn't cheap these are thirty eight hundred dollars for the r5 but when it comes to shooting 8k raw video you're going to have to pay a lot more money in the cinema or commercial space to be able to get that and there's good reasons for that now, Canon is supposed to be coming out with an AK. Well, they are coming out with an AK. They've already released back in July or January videos showing their 8K cinema camera. So they do have one. It's going to be announced at NAB. We'll just have to see what the price is on this. We've got the R5C, which is supposed to be coming out, which is going to be more of a cinema version. So if they don't kick the 30 minute record limit there, we're going to have to smack Canon around. Uh, figuratively, guys, I'm not trying to call any sort of activity on Nikon. Canon, sorry. So the R5C, will it have better active cooling? Let's certainly hope. So I expect the R5C to be very much similar into what Sony has done with the FX3. But I, I use a Ninja, and that really, really helps. Um, I've been recording for the past month or so outside, and for the last week or two, it's been really hot, like 90 degrees, 84 degrees with high humidity. And I haven't had a problem. I've used the Ninja 5 to do all my recording. Now, the Ninja 5 is very, very hot to the touch after I'm done, but no problems whatsoever. And the Canon R5, yeah, not very hot at all. Like you, you get a little bit of warmth right in behind the grip, close to the lens. But yeah, nothing overheating and nothing even with the overheat warning coming up. So the Ninja 5 has been really a lifesaver for me for doing any sort of work where I'm going to be recording for 10, 15, 20, an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, I can definitely count on the Ninja 5 and it's really, really helped me. There are other things you can do too. Um, now also by recording to the Ninja, I don't have the CF Express card and the SD card in there so it gives it a bit more space to cool down. Because here's the thing, even when the camera's just sending a feed over HDMI, it's generating heat and with those cards in there, they absorb the heat, They they hold on to that heat and then they radiate that heat later after the camera stopped recording, taking it longer to cool down. Whereas if you take those out, that really helps. I also have a dummy battery in the Canon and that helps as well because now I don't have any heat from the, uh, the battery. It, the, the dummy battery is actually less dense, so it's able to dissipate heat a little bit better. And those things have really, really helped. So. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing the Nikon Z9, but this is where I want to sort of transition and talk about the complete and utter lack of news. Uh, I went through a couple of weeks ago where I just didn't feel like doing anything. I, I just got sick and tired of doing any work for the channel. I wanted my life back, to be honest with you, because basically, as I'm doing today, just before work, I'll go for a walk, I'll, I'll check the news, I'll make, shoot some video. I, then at my break time, I might shoot some video. Then at lunchtime, I might shoot some video or do some editing or whatever else, post-processing. And then, of course, after work, I'm doing other stuff too, and it never seemed to end. So then I sort of transitioned into, well, you know, I'm only going to cover the really big news, or you know what, if I really feel like getting out there and doing something. 
and I want to produce better quality. I want to shoot outside, which is a lot more challenging to me. And I want to play around with exposure and lighting and try and nail that a whole lot better as well. Now today, another thing I'm realizing is, well, this setup is working well when it's really windy. These shades that I have above me, they, I'm just checking a recording, yeah, it's still recording. Uh, they're moving back and forth and creating some noise. And I do believe the Tascam does a great job of um, dealing with the wind noise due to the dead cat that I have here. And, it show, and while it's omnidirectional, it's really strong in the first foot or so where you'd expect a lavalier bike to be strong. But that's what I'm doing now is I'm trying to have fun, play around with things. And this morning I was actually really looking for news. I wanted to do something. Uh, I just, I know, I, 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 I got the love back. I, get, I wanted to do this more for fun again. And I think that's the main thing is sometimes we need to take a break from things to sit back and ask us questions as to why we're doing it. And, you know, in the last two or three weeks, work has been so crazy that, you know, I needed those breaks to actually go for a walk to unwind. And, you know, I, it was amazing how efficient I was at recording. I could record a video in seven minutes, like what I was doing last year. I was recording a vi video in seven minutes. If it was about five minutes when it aired, it was seven minutes recorded. If it was about two or three minutes, I probably spent five minutes recording it. It was using the Ninja, so I didn't have to do any transcoding. Took it into the computer and immediately slapped on some effects. Didn't use any overlays. And I was able to get, I actually got videos out and published within 29 minutes. And it was amazing how quick I got things, how efficient I was. But I was burning myself out and I was not enjoying life as much. And one of the reasons I buried myself in it was outside of work, there wasn't a whole lot to do. And I'm not one of those people who can week after week, month after month, binge on Netflix, Amazon Prime, Apple TV, Plex, and all these other sources, Disney that are out there. It's just... I feel like I'm wasting my life away. I don't want to be a tourist. And even when I travel, I don't want to be a tourist. I want to be somehow actively engaged in the environment. So I know I'm rambling a little bit, but that's okay. It's the Friday before a long weekend. Even work-wise, it's not too busy. So I'm going to go in and take care of some things that I probably forgot to do over the last couple of weeks. Get caught up on paperwork. Have a nice long lunch. And you know what? I don't know if anybody from work is watching. I might even take an, a little extra long lunch today just because, you know what, it's the Friday before a long weekend. And uh, my birthday was yesterday. And, my, you know, it wasn't a very good birthday. I, I was so exhausted from not sleeping the night before again. And I went for my rehab. It's, I've got a back injury, so I go for rehab every now and then, and it really helps. And they really do beat the living daylights out of me. And sometimes it's very painful. And usually once I leave there, I'm exhausted. And I was so exhausted when I got home, I just went to sleep. And I didn't wake up till about 10 o'clock. And then when I got up at 10 o'clock, I couldn't believe it was 10 o'clock. I really couldn't. And I realized, oh, wait a minute. It's Friday. It's July the 30th in England, which means the Grand Tour, episode three of season four is out. And this is a Scottish Highland uh, adventure. So I watched that. It was an hour and a half long. And um, it was a, a more relaxed, subdued one. But... I really liked it. It was a way to sort of relax, and I thought, okay, now I'm ready to go to bed. Went downstairs and relaxed. So a lot of rambling today, a lot of relaxing, humorous coverage. Uh, go ahead and watch Sam Newton's video. Give him a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe and tell him I sent you. Um, really, really great content that he's producing. Very talented individual. You can tell that this is not his day job. He, he's skilled, and he brings those skills over. But again, thank you so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. Uh, if you're looking at purchasing any gear, don't forget to use Amazon.uk or co.uk, Amazon.com or BNH, because I do get 2% back, which I use to purchase camera gear to help support this channel. Thanks so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. Have yourself a great long weekend, and we'll see you again soon.